Meta's working on a Twitter alternative. The TikTok ban will also enforce a ban on VPNs, fining people up to $1 million. This new YouTube feature provides more monetization options for its creators. Hey creators, it's time for your monthly social media news and trend recap. March has been an eventful month. So in this video, we're going to be giving you an update on the TikTok ban in the US, talking about currently trending memes and sounds in the social media space. And of course, platform specific updates such as Meta Verified on Instagram and a secret app that they're working on, a new YouTube feature that brings you in more monetization options and so much more. Like always, resources for each article and timestamps will be listed in the description below. And of course, a huge thanks to my video team at Story for curating, scripting, and editing this month's news and trend recap. Now let's go. Jumping straight into the latest update on the TikTok ban in the US. TikTok CEO Sho Chu met with the US Senate two weeks ago to address concerns over TikTok. Lawmakers from both political parties have called for a ban on TikTok, citing concerns about data privacy, national security, mental health, and of course, protection of children. Ahead of his hearing to help ease tensions between TikTok and the US government, TikTok CEO Sho Chu posted a video on the platform on March 21st, appealing directly to the app's users ahead of his grilling. In the video, Chu emphasized the scale of TikTok's user base. TikTok has over 150 million monthly active users here in the US, 50 million of which are businesses that are using their app to help reach customers. TikTok claims to have a risk mitigation in place to ensure that the US data remains secure, but lawmakers and intelligence officials remain unconvinced. All of this leading to the hearing where Chu answered questions in front of the US Senate. For over five hours, Chu was grilled and faced calls for the app to be banned in the United States, emphasizing TikTok's independence from China. Chu stated that the app is not available in mainland China and TikTok itself is headquartered in Los Angeles and Singapore with over 7,000 employees in the US alone. Chu also defended the app's data collection practices, stating that they are no different from those of other major tech companies in the US. Chu claims that TikTok is committed to being transparent with its users about what data it's collecting and what they do with that data. And that he does not believe they collect more data than any other players in the industry. Independent researchers have also backed up Chu's assertions, finding that TikTok does not appear to collect any more data than mainstream social networks like Facebook or Twitter. Some lawmakers also expressed concerns about TikTok's impact on children, including allegation that the app recommends videos promoting those to self-harm, eating disorders, and even suicide. And while TikTok has launched features to provide additional safeguards for younger users, lawmakers criticize the features as being too easy for teens to bypass. That's a quick summary of the hearing, but post hearing, Chu released this video to TikTok, sharing his promises and commitment to all of US users. Number one, we will continue to keep safety, especially for teenagers, a top priority. Second, we will continue to protect your data from unauthorized foreign access. Now in the US, American data will be stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. Third, we will ensure that TikTok remains a platform for free expression and that it cannot be manipulated by any government. And fourth, we will be transparent and give access to third party independent monitors to keep us accountable for our commitments. Now we know that trust is built with every decision we make. We are proud of the groundbreaking work we are doing to be the most trusted platform in the world. Thank you for listening. I hope you share this information with your friends, your family, and your elected officials on why TikTok is important to you. So why TikTok? Why now? I think TikTok is really the scapegoat for the government to enact Bill S-686, also known as the Restrict Bill or the TikTok Ban Bill, which of course, all information to this bill will be linked down below. This bill was introduced on March 7th of this year to prohibit certain transactions between persons in the US and foreign adversaries and for other purposes. Literally it says, and for other purposes. <laughs> Here's a list of qualified foreign adversaries, but of course these can change at any time. As you continue to read through the bill, you will learn that the bill allows the US to ban any technology that's used to contact or communicate with foreign adversaries, including things like VPNs. 
If you use a VPN to access any banned apps, such as TikTok, it is made a criminal act under this bill. And the penalty? A minimum of 20 years in prison and a minimum of $250,000 or a million dollar fine. In addition, this bill will also give the US government access to monitor any and all activity by any suspected devices, such as your phone, gaming consoles, routers, ring cameras, smart thermostats, basically anything using the internet, they will be able to monitor you 24 seven without having to notify you. A TikTok ban has never looked this serious, meaning we might not have access to not only TikTok, but any app made in China, such as CapCut, ExpressVPN, Microsoft Bing, and more, but we will just have to wait and see over the next few months what the decision is made. On a lighter note, let's look at some of the memes that kept us laughing and our video views skyrocketing all of March. First, let's talk about Pedro Pascal, the internet's new man of the hour. With the new season of The Mandalorian, as well as HBO's The Last of Us, Pedro Pascal has been in front of us constantly and I'm not complaining. This popularity has crossed over to TikTok where many are making memes using clips from variety of Pedro Pascal's films. One of these memes comes from a scene in last year's movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, where Pascal and Nick Cage are driving in a convertible while Mama Cass Elliot's 1969 single, Make Your Own Kind of Music plays in the background. Creators are using this meme to make light of a crappy situation, explain polar opposites between you and someone you know, or even ridiculous plot twists that you've experienced in life. The other one is a more recent one, and it is a cap cut template of Pascal eating a sandwich. This meme can be used to highlight some simple sweet moments in life or for a humorous spin, something really mundane, relatable, or boring. Moving along from Pedro Pascal, I know, I know we're sad. But another popular meme is this one of a kid drinking something and then trying to hide himself gagging. This has been used a variety of ways to communicate something that actually makes you gag or even something that is just cringy to you that you really don't like. If you want to use either Pedro Pascal meme or like the kid gagging or any sort of meme like those on TikTok, use the CapCut app. On the bottom, when you open the app, select template and use the category meme or for TikTok. There you will find trending or commonly used memes for you to adapt to, to your own meme. And then our final meme or trend before talking about trending music and audio is AI presidents. If you're worried about the implications of using AI for catfishing, no worries, people are just using it to make gamer memes. TikTok creators have been using AI text to speech generators to create clips of Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and other US presidents and celebrities playing Minecraft. While they play, the presidents talk and argue about music, video games, and even the recent Selena Gomez, Hailey Bieber drama. Some creators are even making edits of the presidents talking about them and their own music products and services. This is so lame, Joe. Hey, I know. I just got the Doomslayer skin in Fortnite. You guys want to go inside and watch me get a couple dubs? Michelle said we can't come inside until we get some sun. She's making pizza. Oh, I just love Michelle's pizza. Yum, she makes good pizza. Go fish. I don't know how I feel about AI being used on celebrities or people of high status and kind of forcing them to make, say certain things or pretending they said certain things. Don't know how I feel about that, but you gotta admit some of these videos are pretty funny. We've got some new trending sounds and music this month, most noticeably Megan Trainer with her single Mother. The song follows Megan's past themes of having fun and feeling empowered and is a fun lighthearted song about taking charge. I literally sing this around the house. No, I don't. I literally will just say, I am your mother to John all the time, even though I don't know. Another song that has been blowing up on TikTok is a sped up version of Ceilings by rising star Lizzie McAlpine. While the song is being used a variety of ways, the trend around it has people running while lip syncing to the camera, eventually running faster and building to cinematic masterpiece. One of the best versions of this I have seen was done by the baseball team, the Savannah Bananas. I thought it was just brilliantly done and it's a great example of what the trend is. If you're like me, your For You page has been nothing but Taylor Swift the past few days. Taylor kicked off her long awaited eras tour this month and this has caused an explosion of Taylor Swift content and songs growing on the app. As her tour continues, we can predict her music will continue to trend more and more over the next coming months.
And then finally, sound specifically, a sound that has been taking off is Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Shawn Mendes's performance as a singing crocodile has been gaining popularity online recently. This meme uses a melody from the movie Lao Lao Crocodile and imposes it on other reptilians or things that look similar. Whether it's a claw clip, chopsticks, or anything else that looks even remotely like a crocodile's mouth, Lyle's melody is everywhere. A lot of creators are making fun of Mendez's appearance as Lao Lao the Crocodile because a lot of people just don't think his voice matches the crocodile. Like it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense for some. I haven't seen the movie, so I can't make a comment, but that is where the gaining popularity of this comes from. People just think it's hilarious to have that voice paired with a crocodile. And now it's become an internet meme, sensation, an internet, what have you. When it comes to trends, one thing is for certain that things are always changing. Who would have known that a cartoon crocodile would have taken over last month? The only way to stay ahead is to stay informed with trend report powered by story. Story are my amazing video editors, hi, who also do the research so that you can have update videos like these. When you subscribe to their trend report, you get a newsletter each Friday detailing the biggest trends that are happening that week. With the trend report, you'll never be left in the dark on anything trending. And yes, it's free, it's free. So don't let the next big trend pass you by without being in the know. Sign up for our trend report through the link down below. Now my personal favorite part, let's touch on some platform specific updates that happened last month. Meta, the parent company of Instagram, has been staying busy this month and is even working on a secret project. But before we talk about that, let's talk about its new revenue sharing system and of course, Meta Verified. Instagram announced Meta Verified, I believe end of February, where it is a monthly subscription for Instagram users where they can subscribe to get access for verification, the ability to chat live with an Instagram representative for questions and support, overall security for your account, and even increased reach. Now, as of lately, March's update, Meta Verified is officially being released to the US, but, after their first launch in Australia, there were a lot of concerns and people vocalizing their concerns about increased reach. So that will not be included in this rollout for the US users. I think a lot of people were sketched for the whole pay to play thing where it's like, oh, you want me to pay you to increase my reach? That's sketchy. So Instagram, is not gonna be doing that for this version. They're going to continue to explore what that means and how to adapt that if that's something they want to include in the future. Update two, Meta pauses Reels bonus program as it develops a new ad revenue share system. Meta announced a temporary pause on its Reels creator fund program. The fund was launched in August, 2021 to financially support creators who produced engaging Reels content on Instagram. The pause has said to be a temporary measure to enable the company to review its program and assess its impact on creators. Meta has not specified when or if the program will reopen for applications, but they did state that they will still respect any commitment for bonuses for 30 days. Meaning if you've already started your 30 day bonus real program, if you have it, you know, that means they'll continue to honor the payout for the remaining 30 days of that agreement. Update number three, Meta working on a Twitter alternative. Now back to that secret project I mentioned earlier, Meta is reportedly working on a decentralized version of a Twitter-like social media platform. The new platform will reportedly allow users to control their own data and be free from censorship, as well as provide a more level playing field for smaller creators. The new platform will utilize blockchain technology to create a decentralized network of users with no single entity controlling the platform. Basically, this would allow users to have more control over their own data and prevent any one entity from having too much power over that specific platform. While the project is still in its early stages, the development of a decentralized social media platform could have significant implications for the future of social media. It remains to be seen whether Meta will be successful in creating a viable alternative to centralized social media platforms, but it is clear that there is a growing demand for decentralized user-controlled alternatives to the current social media landscape. What are your thoughts on this potential new social media platform that could be coming down the line? 
While TikTok has been busy trying not to get banned in the US, they still have made a few moves worth noting. A potential new feature you might start seeing at the top of your TikTok is categories. These are topics like gaming, food, or whatever you tell the algorithm that you like. This kind of reminds me of categories on YouTube. You can find content that you're interested in right then and there a lot easier. Which does make sense since TikTok is trying to compete directly with YouTube and released the ability to post a 10 minute video to highly active users. To see if you have the option to post a 10 minute video, just go to film a TikTok and where you see the duration of like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60, whatever, where you see those durations, 10 minutes should be an option. TikTok will now enable you, the user, to start over in the app by refreshing your algorithmic recommendations. If you feel like your For You page just has been the same thing over and over and over again and you kind of hate everything that you're seeing, then you might wanna know that TikTok has announced a new feature that will allow users to refresh their algorithmic recommendations. The feature will be accessible via a button in the settings menu and will be rolled out gradually to all users globally. With this new feature, users will have more control over the content that's in their feed and can avoid feeling like they're stuck in a rut. The ability to refresh algorithmic recommendations is a significant step towards creating user control and personalization on social media platforms. This also shows how TikTok is continuously working on improving the user experience and keep users engaged on their app. The final TikTok update is a new app alert. TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, launched a new app called Lemon8, which is apparently a combination of Instagram and Pinterest. I did create an account just to test it out and it is very much Pinterest and Instagram. It looks like Pinterest, but when you click on posts, it looks like Instagram posts with like carousels, the caption, giving dialogue, comments, all the things. So very much combination of the two. I'm interested to see if this will pick up traction. Ever since Elon Musk took over Twitter, the app has been making major changes. However, are these changes actually improving how things are being run over there or are they self-sabotaging? Twitter looks to add ID verification to its Twitter blue signup process. Twitter is reportedly exploring the addition of an ID verification process for its Twitter blue subscription service. The move is aimed at increasing trust and reducing spam on the platform, as well as providing an additional layer of security for Twitter blue subscribers. If implemented, the ID verification process would require users to submit a valid form of identification, such as a US government issued ID or passport during the signup process. Twitter would then verify the user's identity before granting access to premium features of Twitter Blue. The move comes amid growing concerns about online security and privacy, particularly in light of recent high profile data breaches and cyber attacks. While the addition of an ID verification process could help to increase trust and reduce spam on the platform, it may also raise concerns about privacy and potential misuse of user data. Update two, Twitter looks to give clarity to its algorithm. Twitter CEO Elon Musk tweeted on March 20th that the popular app would release the code behind its algorithm to the public next week, which should be, technically it should be released by now or by the time you're seeing this. The move to open source Twitter's feed algorithm is significant because it will enable third party developers and researchers to analyze and improve the platform's recommendation engine. Twitter's algorithm determines what content is displayed on a user's feed and this decision has been subject to criticism in the past as a result in the promotion of harmful or misleading content. The open sourcing of the algorithm will allow for greater transparency and accountability, as well as a potential for improvements in the accuracy and quality of recommendations. This decision by Twitter to release their algorithm also could have a wider impact for the tech industry as it could encourage other companies to follow suit and open source their own algorithms. And it could lead to increased collaboration and innovation within the industry so we could see better performing algorithms that the user would actually enjoy. This is something that I'm pretty excited about to see how Twitter uses their algorithm and would love to see if Instagram would follow suit in releasing their algorithm. I mean, Twitter announces their Twitter blue subscription thing where you pay for verification. And then sure enough, Instagram announces Meta Verified, a monthly subscription where you pay for verification. So 
I feel like if Twitter is going to open source their algorithm, then maybe Instagram would open source their algorithm as well. And who knows what could happen. Let's talk about YouTube podcasts. Believe it or not, YouTube is one of the most popular platforms for podcasts with a vast global audience of over 2 billion active users. So recently YouTube released podcasts on YouTube to help creators expand their reach and build their community while providing more monetization options. Now on YouTube, you can start your own podcast create a designated place for all the episodes on your channel and access monetization through ads and even offering episodes to only channel members that pay a monthly subscription. It's funny because I feel like when you hear podcast, you think Spotify, Apple podcasts, or anything that's audio, but YouTube did an analysis and found that podcasts on YouTube with video, particularly those featuring hosts on camera are performing better than podcasts with just static visuals. Video allows more intimacy with your audience and allows the creator or host to get creative with visual storytelling. Update two, YouTube creators can now dub their videos in multiple languages with the platform's new feature called YouTube dubbed video. This feature is available to creators who have monetized content on the platform and allows them to upload a translated script or use an AI generated one to create dubbed videos in up to 10 languages. With the new feature, creators can now reach a broader audience by providing their content in multiple languages, making their videos more accessible to non-native speakers. This feature is expected to be particularly helpful for creators who make educational or tutorial videos as it enables them to share knowledge and information with people who speak many different languages. The feature is also a part of YouTube's effort to improve accessibility and inclusivity on its platform. And that is all for this month's trend recap. Don't forget, if you want to stay up to date on the latest trends happening in the social media space, be sure to sign up for a weekly trend report through the link down below. Now, what news stood out to you? What are your thoughts on all of these things? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, let's keep it respectful because everyone is entitled to their own opinions. Hug that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when I post my next video and I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy. Bye.